Okay, um, I just want to make a, a video on vapor liquid equilibrium and cover the basics of it. I've, I've been getting questions and I think there may be a little confusion about this, so I just want to make sure that uh, we cover this because it's such an important part of um, what we do here for this last part of, of the course. So, uh, you know, you can imagine I might have some bowl and it's filled with some liquid here and Above this liquid, I will have, you know, here's my liquid, here's my vapor, and there, uh, over time, an equilibrium will come about between the two. And we're interested, I'm just going to give you some examples related to um, binary substances where we have just A and B. So we just have two compounds, A and B, in this mixture. And within this mixture, there's some mole fraction within here, in the liquid part, and there's also a mole fraction of A and B in, in the vapor part. And the convention that we use is we use that uh, oftentimes we'll write XA and YA, these being the more volatile components, so these are the components that want to be more into the um, vapor phase, we just simply write these as X or Y. When, and if you see X or Y, that just simply means that the uh, mole fraction of the more volatile components of the two. So there's two species in this example. But anyways, XA, um, XA plus XB is equal to 1. YA plus YB is equal to 1. So again, the mole fractions here add up to 1. Mole fractions up in the vapor phase, they add up to 1. And we can draw this or graph this um, and what our, is our XY plot. And if we have this xy plot, and I'm just going to draw this, this is y equals x. And that's just for, um, that's just uh, to help us read the plot. It doesn't actually have any physical meaning. We just put that on there to help us. But this is our plot of y versus x, usually something like this. And again, this is for species A, and I'll just write A there and A here. And what this is basically saying is that there's a relationship between the mole fraction of A in here and the mole fraction of A in the vapor. And notice how the curve is above the y equals x line. So that means that for any value of x we choose, the mole fraction um, in the vapor phase is always larger than the corresponding mole fraction in the liquid. So there's more um, a greater mole fraction in the vapor than the liquid. And that's because, again, A is the more volatile component. So if I, for instance, I might read here an XA may be 0.5, YA may be 0.7. You know, so I'll have an example here. XA equal to 0.5, YA is equal to 0.7 off that graph. And I can just follow this graph wherever I am to, along the x line to find out where my y line is to find the relationship between y a and or x a and y a here. And we can make a similar plot for the um, relationship between x b and y b or the mole fractions of species b, but we don't need to because we have these equations right here. So once we know y a and x a, we can just use these two equations right here to find out um, what y a or YB and XB are. So we have a way to figure out the relationship between XA, XB, YA, and YB using these equations in this uh, relationship right here, the XY plot. Now, what about when we reach the ends? Like, what happens down here? What happens if XA is equal to zero? Well, I didn't draw this completely out, but it, the graph goes something like this. It uh, tapers down to uh, zero. So in this case, when we reach y a is equal to uh, x a at zero, the zero point right here, that simply means that we are 100% species b. On the other hand, when we're up here at uh, x a and y a equals one, that's 100% species a. So that means we just have a pure substance or no mixture when we're down here or up here. And somewhere in between here is when we have a mixture between a and b. But again, the ends represent the pure substances when the mole fractions are 1 or 0 for A, uh, and also 1 or 0 for B. And, and finally, there's one other plot, and that is the TXY plot. And 
this plot looks something like this like there and in this case uh, just to remind you we have temperature on the y-axis and then the mole fractions down here on the x-axis and we can read this mole this x-axis is actually um, both the vapor and the liquid mole fractions and again since I wrote XY, this is just for species A or the more volatile component. And when the, to figure out what, um, whether we're talking mole or the mole fraction of the liquid or the vapor, we just have to look at the corresponding curve. So this is the curve for the liquid, and this is the curve for the vapor. So if I'm at a given temperature, let me just draw this over here. If I'm at, say, this temperature right here, I would read this over across and read this over here across. So this point right here is the mole fraction of the liquid for species A, and over here is the mole fraction of the uh, vapor for species A. And again, that's a constant temperature line that I read across there, and I just find out where it uh, matches up those two. This data over here, the XY plot, and this plot right here, they are the exact same data, except this one over here contains the temperature. Um, so if I match up something right here in X and a Y on this line, they should match up on this line over here. Just two alternative ways to uh, represent the XY data by including the temperature. Um, and again, liquid phase, mixture phase, vapor phase. So um, there you have it. Um, how do we how we exactly go about um, using this data? Uh, is, is you got to make sure you understand how to use the plots. If, you, if you're misinterpreting the plots or not understanding them correctly, you definitely won't be able to uh, use this to get information uh, that you'll need for the problems. Okay, there you go.